In this lesson, we will learn a very useful kind of enthalpy, the enthalpy change during a reaction, abbreviated delta H subscript Rxn. Knowing this value allows us to convert how much heat is given off or observed during a chemical change. In other words, this value will allow us to convert between moles of chemical and kilojoules of energy during that chemical's reaction. We all know that chemical changes involve changes in energy, sometimes big changes in energy. A burning campfire releases enough heat to keep your hands warm, while the same reaction on a much larger scale releases much larger amounts of heat. Every reaction has a corresponding enthalpy of reaction, delta H Rxn, which gives the energy change when a reaction is performed a specific number of times usually one mole times. To put it into our money analogy, the enthalpy of reaction is like the cost of buying or selling one mole of a reaction. Let's see this in practice. Methane combustion has an enthalpy of reaction of negative 890 kilojoules per mole. So if I react one mole of methane with two moles of oxygen, I will get 890 kilojoules of energy along with my products. If I react twice as much methane, then I will get twice as much energy out. And if I reverse the reaction, then the 890 kilojoules of energy must be absorbed for each mole of methane we create. The delta H reaction for this reaction is now positive 890 kilojoules per mole. So to recap, the reaction enthalpy is the amount of heat transferred during a chemical reaction. When the value is negative, as it is for combustion reactions, it means the reaction is exothermic. It gives off heat. Endothermic reactions absorb heat and have a positive enthalpy. Notice that the units on enthalpy are kilojoule per mole. That is energy per amount. Anytime we see units as a fraction, it means we have a conversion factor. This conversion factor tells me that if I burn one mole of C2H6O, according to the reaction above, it will release 1,368 kilojoules of energy. It also tells me that if I react three moles of oxygen, according to the reaction above, it would release 1,368 kilojoules of energy. Likewise, in order to form two moles of CO2, according to the reaction above, the reaction will release 1,368 kilojoules of energy. The same is true to form three moles of H2O. The reaction enthalpy always corresponds to a specific reaction equation. As we saw on the last two slides, if we double or reverse the written reaction, we'll have to double or reverse the enthalpy change as well. So now I'd like to describe something that will guarantee happen to you in this class. You will get a homework problem or a test question with, which asks, do exothermic reactions have a positive or a negative delta H? And your first thought will be exothermic, that means hot. Hot means temperature go up. Go up means positive. Unfortunately, your first thought will be wrong. Exothermic means the system loses chemical energy. It gives away the energy in the form of heat. Delta H is negative for exothermic reactions. Exothermic means that high energy chemicals give away their excess energy to become stable products. Endothermic means that low energy chemicals have heat added to them in order to make them higher energy. To use our money analogy, think of an exothermic reaction like it's having an explosive party. It's withdrawn big amounts of money from the bank and is spreading that cash around like Peter Pumpkinhead. The most recent transaction in this bank account would be a negative. 
On the other hand, endothermic reactions are like putting in hours at your job to deposit some hard earned cash into the bank. Your bank transaction is positive. Lastly, the enthalpy change depends on the states of matter. The process of solid ice melting to liquid water requires 44 kilojoules per mole. The reverse process, freezing, requires the exact opposite amount of energy. It gives away 44 kilojoules per mole. Let's do a practice problem. Suppose 10 grams of oxygen react in the following way. What is the energy change? Is this energy absorbed or released? Pause the video and see if you can answer it without my help. Here's the solution. Although this is a completely different topic, it's just another dimensional analysis problem. We'll take 10 grams of oxygen and convert it to moles. The next conversion factor is a new one. How many moles of oxygen does it take to perform this reaction one mole times? In other words, how many O2s are in the recipe? There are three O2s in this reaction recipe, so there's three moles of oxygen in one mole of the reaction. Lastly, we'll multiply by the reaction enthalpy to convert to kilojoules of energy. Plugging it all into my calculator, I get negative 143 kilojoules. Now, is this energy absorbed or released? Well, one big hint should be that this is a combustion reaction. And every combustion reaction I know releases quite a bit of energy. Negative means energy is released. 